And now continuing with the plethora of different films that I am seeing before the end of the year, let's go into this one. Hello once again watchers of Good Movies, my name is Nick Pell, and this is once again coming from my apartment. Now today we are going to be talking about the film The Danish Girl. You have probably heard about this film mainly because of Eddie Redman's performance and his transformation in this film. He goes from a man into a woman back and forth throughout this movie and he does a phenomenal job doing so. You really can't tell half the time when he is Lily and when he is his male self. Um, just because they look they look similar you can tell that it's Eddie Redman but just if you didn't know you would think they're two completely different people and just the transformation is just astonishing to me if you're not familiar the Danish girl is about a man in the 1920s who realizes that he is a woman he's a transgender woman and so we really get to see kind of the mental struggle which goes on within him when he begins to kind of realize this because we see him just kind of See, sensing some sort of connection to women's clothing. That's kind of the main way that they portray this is when he is wearing a dress or when he just like has women's clothing against his naked body. You just see him in a state of mind in which he realizes that something feels right for the first time in his life and it's just a really interesting way that they decide to portray that. It does show the struggles that go along with this type of thing though in, in this common day and age society where transgender people are becoming more accepted it, you see it back when it was just something that was thought of as a mental disorder and it's it's not hard to really figure out why people thought that way. You obviously, you have um, a man or a woman thinking that they're the opposite gender. It just seemed like ludicrous at that time and now we know it's a little bit more complicated than that. And so you have, like, he goes to see these doctors and trying to figure out what's wrong with them. A lot of them think that he's crazy. A lot of them try to get him committed because of this. And you just kind of see the ignorance of the time, and it's kind of an interesting portrayal of that. You also see the struggle with his wife, Alicia Vikander. She does also a fantastic job in this movie. I really enjoy seeing her. I last saw her in Ex Machina, which was fantastic. And so I'm really excited to see what she does in the future. She plays Eddie Redmayne's wife. And uh, um, you just see kind of her mental struggle as she's trying to accept his newfound identity and you see her fight it at first and then gradually start to accept it as it partly benefits her but also she sees how it is benefiting him and yeah I thought that, that their relationship was easily the most interesting and the most prominent of the film. The film itself can feel kind of slow at times though especially in the last act or so because I was tired going into it so I was kind of head bombing a little bit um, towards the end because it's not a movie that everyone is going to want to sit down and just watch for two hours because it is slow. There's not a whole lot that happens. It's a very interesting film to watch because there's interesting things happening but nothing that's terribly action-packed and so it's not a film that everyone is going to be able to sit down and enjoy. And also in regards to that it's not something that is going to relate to everybody. This is a very tough film to kind of see oneself through Eddie Redman's eyes because not everyone has this connection with transgender people, um, at least not yet. And so I, I myself found it kind of tough to relate to Eddie Redman's character. I, I felt for him or her and I, I sympathized, but I couldn't like put myself in her shoes and just kind of put that situation upon my shoulders and so I think in that regard as opposed to something which is featuring a straight actor or um, just anyone who's gay um, those types of things even in this common age society they're a little bit more relatable and people can kind of see themselves fitting those roles or at least someone who they know fitting those roles I myself have a transgender friend uh, and so I kind of saw him through this character and um, assumed that some of um, the struggles that A. Redman portrays with Lily is something that he also went through. As this is a biopic, if you weren't familiar with that, um, it does work in the biopic sense that I really like it too. It does wrap up Lily's story quite nicely and in a way that makes sense for the time and they would have to make it correct because this is how the story ends. And uh, 
thus, yeah. And so they also show kind of what happened as a result of the events of this film, which I always like to see at the end of biopics. But guys, those are my thoughts on The Danish Girl. Was it my film of the year? No. But I did have a fun time watching it. I thought it was very interesting. If it was not a little bit slow at times, just for me personally. But those are my thoughts on The Danish Girl. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Did you like the film as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, favorite, comment, and subscribe once again if you so choose. I appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Bell. And once again, keep on watching.